Yeah. We're working on the MX-5 today. I've got myself a code suede steering wheel and some new rubbers for the pedals. So let's get to it. Right, first thing is to get yourself a drink. Have a vape if you need one. And get the wheels straight. Steering wheel straight. So now we've got to undo these two bolts here to take the airbag off. 10 mil, I'm guessing. Uno. Dos. Okay, now I've disconnected the battery, so hopefully this isn't going to blow up. Basically, you had to lift up this white piece here, and then that popped off there. One airbag. Looks like this middle one is a 21 mil. Christ. Right, while the steering wheel is off, I'm going to do the pedals because I've got more access to get down here. As you can see, the accelerator pedal has been missing a rubber for a while. And the brake and the clutch are starting to get a little bit worn down. So I've got my new pedal rubbers here. Should be a nice and easy fix. As you can see on the back, they sort of slip over like that. So these should just pull off from the back. There we go. Okay, so the little nipple bit goes at the top.
Yeah. While I was at it, I gave the dead pedal a bit of a clean. Got some of the mud up out of that. So now, pedal's looking good. Okay, now, because this was gonna be a budget drift build, I decided I was gonna save a little bit of money and I was gonna get a second-hand steering wheel off of eBay. I did get quite a fairly good deal, a code steering wheel with a cheap boss kit for 30 quid delivered, so that's not too bad, saved me a bit of cash. However, the cheapy eBay boss kit that it came with is no way, shape or form gonna fit. Basically, the lugs on the end here aren't in the right place to accept the, um, or the lug holes here aren't in the right place to accept the lugs on the clock spring, which is what clicks your indicators backwards and forwards when you're turning left and right. Also, I noticed because this is a cheap uh, eBay boss kit that's been used before, there were some cracks in the metal there, so that's junk. So after doing some research, turns out the best bet is to get a HKB Sports boss kit Japanese import, specifically made for an MX-5 NB. It comes with an airbag delete resistor. So I'm not gonna get an airbag light, come on. It comes with a horn positive that fits directly into the factory plug. So no soldering required. However, the code steering wheel that I've got on the horn has two connectors. This is the uh, HKB horn connector that came with the Boss. That'll plug in there nicely. Horn doesn't work. This needs to be connected to a ground from the steering column. So I need to connect that to the actual Boss, metal part of the Boss that's gonna click into here. Um, now I could use a spade connector and a wire and solder it somewhere or screw it in with a self tapper but with the cheap eBay boss kit was this metal ring with a spade connector on it so I'm going to somehow try and use this to fit into the, uh, the new boss obviously it doesn't quite fit in there, nothing would be that easy so what I need to do now is basically get this assembled get this boss kit in there and bolt it up and then we'll try and work out the wiring. Now another issue I found, I'll tell you what, they do say buy cheap, buy twice. <laughs> another issue I've found is that once this boss kit is in, let me line it up for the top, there, and this deep dish code steering wheel goes on, we are now a million miles away from the indicators. So that is gonna be an issue. I might have to go and buy another steering wheel anyway, one that isn't quite as deep as this. So keep an eye out on eBay because I may be be selling this again or maybe it'll fit in the, uh, in the combo van, I don't know. But um, as it stands, that's gonna work for now. I'm not gonna be squashing my knee every time I shut the door. Um, gives me a bit of extra leg room. I'm going to drive it and see how irritating it is being this far away from indicators. Shouldn't be too bad, I mean... Um, it's not the end of the world, but it's not ideal either. So I'm going to probably get another steering wheel anyway to replace this one. But at least the boss kit will all be done and sorted. And then all I need to do is get another steering wheel and it will bolt straight in with six bolts. That'd be nice and easy. Okay, right, I'm sweating it out in here. Gonna open the door a bit. It's a lot more complicated than it first seems putting on a steering wheel. You watch a lot of videos and they're like, oh yeah, just unbolt this, unbolt that, whack this on, boom, there's your steering wheel. But as with everything with cars, there's always unforeseen things to trip you up. All right, now for 75 quid, you do get a quality boss kit. Comes with the bolts and Allen bolts, new Allen bolts and the new Allen key for attaching your steering wheel. New crush washer. Quite know how to get that in there. And new bolts.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, try and get this bolt tightened up a little bit more by putting the steering wheel on. Tight. Let's do more back off. Now, as I said, the uh, boss comes with a airbag delete light. It's basically four wires that goes into a resistor, um, which basically tells the airbag warning system that it is connected to an airbag. The instructions for the boss kit are in pure Japanese, so they're pretty much useless. So what I've worked out is if you stick a red wire into the wire side that has the yellow and red wire, and a black wire into the just plain yellow wire side, into the connectors like that, apparently these two aren't used. So when we turn it on, the airbag light should go out. Yep, there we go, airbag light goes out, no warning signs there. So this now needs to be kind of wrapped around here and taped up out of the way. And then we need to figure out this horn situation. What I decided to do in the end was to drill a hole through this little fin here, strip off the end of the wire that was connected to that metal ring. I'm gonna thread that wire through that hole that I've just drilled and then fill it with solder. Okay, so they've taped this up. Horn's now working, that's all fixed into there nicely. So I'll rotate this around like that. Should hopefully stick in there. Okay, so I've been driving for about 45 miles now on this new steering wheel. I've got to say, I'm actually a lot happier with it now that I've uh, had a little bit of experience with it than I was when I first fitted it. The main issues that I have with the wheel as it stands is obviously the fact that it's a deep dish and it really does bring the steering wheel a lot closer to me. At first I thought that was going to be too close, but having driven it for a while, it's actually in a really good position as long as I've got my seat fully reclined back. So as you might be able to see, I'm right up against the back of the car here. And I've got quite a nice steering position. A lot more leg room compared to the standard steering wheel. Um, before, when I used to have my leg next to the standard steering wheel and close the door, it would squash my leg in between the two. So 
I've got just about enough room there to not get a busted kneecap every time I get in. Um, plenty of leg room down here. Uh, I don't have the seat fully slid back, but it is fully reclined back. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run this steering wheel for a while until I get a bucket seat, which may then change my driving position, depending on how the bucket seat fits. If the bucket seat changes my position enough so that this steering wheel is way too close, then I'll have to get another steering wheel, probably either a half dish or a completely flat one. Another issue that I've been experiencing is that the outside cover of the boss kit here um, sometimes actually rotates with the steering wheel, um, which I didn't think it would do. I thought it would, it would kind of stay still and stationary in that position there. Um, a lot of the times it doesn't, but sometimes you, you, you turn in on full lock and this will start rotating around with the steering wheel. Now I've taped up the wires to the boss hub in here really tight uh, in, so they actually it all moves as one anyway. So I don't worry too much about this catching wires, but it is slightly annoying when this starts sort of creeping around as you're going around the corner. Um, what I might do is either fit um, a bracket inside there, like a little L-shaped bracket, screw it into this and then screw it into this to keep that uh, stay put, you know, um, or maybe glue it to the steering column, I don't know. It's not the um, it's not that annoying that it's an immediate thing that needs fixing, but I might look at that in the future. So just bear that in mind as well that this this might need fixing to the uh, steering column, otherwise it's, it might start spinning around with the steering wheel sometimes. So anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. Hope you enjoyed watching it, and if you're going to do something similar to your MX-5, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how it's getting on and uh, what steering wheel you've chose. Give this video a like if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe for more MX-5 and Combo Mods content coming soon.